Honorable Vice Chancellor, Madam Professor Dr. Sujata Bakchi Banerjee, Madam of uh, Murshidabad University, respected speaker, sir, of this evening, Dr. Abhay Poshad Das, all the faculty members of our institution, our dear students, participants, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me in immense pleasure to extend to you a very warm welcome on behalf of the Murshidabad University that has clubbed all of us for the Teachers Day celebration program 2021 this evening. First of all, I would like to request our head of the department, Dr. Dola Boral, Madam, Associate Professor of the Department of Botany, to deliver her welcome speech. Over to you, Madam. Dola, Madam. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, good evening, everyone and to welcome you all to today's special invited talk on the occasion of Teachers' Day celebration of Murshidabad University. On behalf of my department, I express my gratitude to our Chief Patron, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Murshidabad University, Professor Sujata Bakshi Banerjee, and my sincere gratitude to our today's speaker, Sir Dr. Abhaya Prashad Das, who is eminent botanist and nowadays he is attached with Rajiv Gandhi University of Arunachal Pradesh as UGC adjunct professor. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our request within a very short time and uh, instead of your busy schedule. Thank you, sir, once again. And I also express my gratitude to my seniors, my colleagues of my college, and the teachers of other colleges and universities also who are present here. And I also welcome my beloved students. Uh, the Teacher's Day, that is a special day actually for all of us, where we can pay a hearty tribute to our respected and dear teachers who take untiring efforts to build our futures. We know that the Teacher's Day is celebrated on September 5 every year in honor of Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, and who, is a, who was a great thinker, philosopher, and educationalist, and was the former president of India in 1962 to 1967. But in this year, due to pandemic situation, sir, we, we arrange an online special invited lecture by Sir Dr. Abhaya Prashad Das, and he will speak on the topic on a current and very interesting topic, actually, that is entitled as Biodiversity Conservation Visha Vis Development Experiences from Eastern Himalaya. So now I invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Madam Professor Sujata Bakshi Banerjee, to deliver keynote address. Ma'am. Uh, very good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Today, uh, auspicious day, Teachers' Day. I convey my best regards to our guest, Dr. Ova Prashad Dash, Professor UGC. Rajiv Gandhi University, Tanagar, Arunachal Pradesh, and our respected colleagues and the participants. Uh, I convey my best regard for uh, this today, the special occasion, Teachers' Day. Today, we are all in Bengali. We are all in Bangladesh. যদি আপনাদের আপত্তি না থাকে আমি আজকে আমাদের মুর্শিদাবাদ বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের যে উদ্ভিদবিদ্যা বিভাগের যে আলোচনা চক্র এই আলোচনা চক্রে माननीय অধ্যাপক ডক্টর অভয় প্রসাদ দাস তিনি উপস্থিত হয়েছেন তার কাছে আজকে আমরা হিমালয় অঞ্চলের বায়োডাইভার্সিটি কনজারভেশন এই বিষয় নিয়ে আমরা আলোচনা চক্রে শুনব আমরা বলি যে দেবতাত্তা হিমালয় এবং এই হিমালয় পর্বত আমাদের প্রাচীন সাহিত্য পুরাণ 
ধর্মশাস্ত্র থেকে শুরু করে আজকের দিন অব্দি বহু গবেষণার স্থল এবং বহু বিষয় অজানা তথ্য সংগ্রহ স্থল সেই সঙ্গে আমরা জানি এই বিশাল হিমালয় অঞ্চল সেই হিমালয় অঞ্চলে বহু প্রাণীর বসবাস বহু জীবজন্তুর বসবাস বহু দুর্লভ যে প্রকৃতিবিদ্যার উদ্ভিদ সেখানে রয়েছে এবং সেই অজানা রহস্যকে উন্মোচন করার জন্য এই হিমালয়ের গহ্বর থেকে বহু বিষয়কে রক্ষা করার জন্য চিরকালই আমরা দেখেছি মানুষের তৎপরতা এবং গবেষণার শেষ নেই কিন্তু আজকের দিনে প্রকৃতি এমন এক বিপুল ভয়ঙ্কর সময়ের সামনে উপস্থিত হয়ে পড়ছে ক্রমশ যে জীবের বাসস্থল ক্রমশ ক্ষুদ্রাতি ক্ষুদ্র হয়ে উঠছে এবং আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে প্রাকৃতিক পরিবেশের মধ্যেও একটা পরিবর্তন ঘটে যাচ্ছে প্রত্যেক ক্ষেত্রেই প্রাকৃতিক পরিবেশের পরিবর্তন ঘটে যাওয়ার জন্য সেখানে নানা রকমের পৃথিবীর উষ্ণতা বেড়ে যাওয়ার জন্য যেখানে ছিল ঝর্ণা সেটা ক্রমশ নদীতে পরিণত হচ্ছে ধ্বংস হয়ে যাচ্ছে এবং মানুষের আগ্রাসী ভূমিকা যে তার বাসস্থান থেকে শুরু করে ভ্রমণ স্থান নির্মাণের জন্য নির্বিচারে কেটে ফেলছে গাছ নির্বিচারে সেখানে রম্য আবাসস্থল তৈরি হয়ে যাচ্ছে হোটেল রিসর্ট তৈরি হয়ে যাচ্ছে সেখান থেকে দেখা যাচ্ছে একটি গাছ যদি কেটে ফেলা হয় তাহলে সেখানে আশ্রয় নেয় যে অজস্র পাখি তারা হয়ে যাচ্ছে নির হারা বাসাহারা এই বাসাহারা পাখিরা কোথায় উড়ে বেড়াবে কোথায় চলে যাবে সেই প্রাণী যারা হিমালয়ের গহ্বরে তারা এই বরফের মধ্যে আশ্রয় নিয়ে তারা যুগের পর যুগ ধরে বসবাস করছে মানুষও হয়ে যাচ্ছে সে প্রকৃতির পরিবেশে সুস্থ সুন্দর মানুষকে আমরা সেখানে প্লাস্টিক ফেলে দিচ্ছি খাবার ফেলে দিচ্ছি নানাভাবে হিমালয়ের প্রাকৃতিক সৌন্দর্যকে বিনষ্ট করে দিচ্ছি তো তাকে রক্ষা করার জন্য যে ভয়ঙ্কর সময় আমাদের সামনে এসে দাঁড়িয়েছে আমরা এই প্যান্ডেমিক পরিস্থিতিতে আমরা সবাই ঘরে বসে বুঝতে পেরেছি যে কিভাবে আমাদের প্রকৃতির কাছে আবার ফিরে যেতে হবে ব্যাক টু নেচার প্রকৃতির আশ্রয় স্থলে আমাদেরকে ফিরে যেতে হবে প্রকৃতিকে রক্ষা করতে হবে কিন্তু কিভাবে রক্ষা করব আমাদের এই সুন্দর প্রকৃতিকে আমাদের সুন্দর হিমালয়কে সুন্দর বনরাজিকে সুন্দর প্রাকৃতিক সৌন্দর্যকে কিভাবে তাকে রক্ষা করা যায় এ বিষয়ে এবং তাকে আরো বেশি তার সৌন্দর্য বৃদ্ধি এবং তাকে ভবিষ্যৎ প্রজন্মের কাছে সুন্দরভাবে তুলে ধরার জন্য আজ আমাদের সামনে এসেছেন আমাদের মাননীয় অধ্যাপক আমি তাকে প্রণাম জানাই তাকে শ্রদ্ধা জানাই তিনি বলেছেন যে তিনি আগেও আমাদের কৃষ্ণনাথ কলেজ এখন যা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় সেখানে তিনি আগে আসতেন পড়াতে সুতরাং তিনি আমাদের এখানে যারা আছেন আমাদের সহকর্মী অধ্যাপক তার প্রতি আমার শ্রদ্ধা জানিয়ে আমরা আজকে তার কাছ থেকেই শুনে নেব যে তিনি আমাদের আজ বলবেন কিভাবে আমরা এই হিমালয়ের প্রকৃতিকে রক্ষা করব এবং কি কি সমস্যা আমাদের সামনে এসছে আমরা তার মুখোমুখি দাঁড়িয়ে রয়েছি যে ভয়ঙ্কর থ্রেটনিং দিচ্ছে প্রকৃতি জানিয়ে দিচ্ছে যে তোমার সামনে বড় বিপদ আছে বিপদ থেকে রক্ষা করার উপায় প্রকৃতির যে রক্ষা করার উপায় তিনি আজ আমাদের বাতলে দেবেন আমরা তার কাছ থেকে শুনে নেব তাকে আমি নমস্কার জানাই সেই সঙ্গে আমাদের উদ্ভিদবিদ্যা বিভাগের মুর্শিদাবাদ বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় তথা কৃষ্ণনাথ কলেজের উদ্ভিদবিদ্যা বিভাগের বিভাগীয় প্রধান এবং সবার সমস্ত অধ্যাপক অধ্যাপিকা বৃন্দ যে ওয়েবিনার করছেন আমাদের সুজন থেকে শুরু করে আমাদের ছাত্রছাত্রী সকলকে এই শুভ দিনে আমার শ্রদ্ধা ভালোবাসা এবং নমস্কার সবাই ভালো থাকুন এবার আমরা শুনে নেব ডক্টর অভয় প্রসাদ দাস প্রফেসর ইউজিসি রাজীব গান্ধী ইউনিভার্সিটি টানাগড় Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, this is an absolute honor and privilege for me to introduce our speaker this evening, Dr. Abhay Pusad Das. <coughs> Dr. Abhay Pusad Das did his bachelor's in 1972. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Abhaya Pusha Das did his bachelor's in 1972 and master's in 1974 from Calcutta University after he received his MPhil degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur in 1976 and PhD degree from Calcutta University in 1989 as well. 
Dr. Das has served as a lecturer and reader under West Bengal Education Service for 14 years from 1976 to 1990. Then he joined University of North Bengal in 1990 and served till 19 uh, and served till 2016. Since then, he is serving as an UGC adjunct professor in the Department of Botany in Rajiv Gandhi University, Arunachal Pradesh. His area of interest is biodiversity studies, systematics, nomenclature, conservation of RET plants, ethnobotany, traditional knowledge, medicinal plants, environment, etc. And he has extensive work on Darjeeling and Sikkim Himalayas, including Tarai and Duars, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. Dr. Das has produced 30 PhD students, including students from Bangladesh, Nepal, and United States of America. Dr. Das has published 240 plus research articles in esteemed journals of national and international repute. He has also published more than 16 books, 400 plus abstracts, 22 popular articles, and participated over 40 radio and TV programs. Programs. He has handled many research projects sponsored by BSI, UGC, DST, MOEF, etc. Attended numerous international and national seminars, conferences, meetings, and had research collaboration with many Indian and foreign universities and institutes. Dr. Ovaya Prasad Das had received several prestigious awards, honors, and fellowships in his prolonged career, such as Vivis Sivrajan Gold Medal of IAAT in 2001, SK Set Prize of ICFRE in 2004, Fellow of Linnean Society of London FLS in 2010, Bharat Jyoti Award of the Indian International Friendship Society, New Delhi, Fellow of Indian Association of Angiosperm Taxonomy, Fellow of West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology in 2005, Fellow of East Himalayan Society of Spermatophyte Taxonomy, Fellow of International Society for the Conservation of Natural Resources, Fellow of Society of Ethnobotanists, and many more. Dr. Das has established North Bengal University Herbarium Botanical Garden, Garden of Medicinal Plants, including ex situ conservation of over 700 species, East Himalayan Society for Spermatophyte Taxonomy in 2007, and new half, half yearly journal named Pleony since 2007, and so far published 28 issues, and initiated a seminar series for East Himalayan Society for Spermatophyte Taxonomy, etc. Dr. Das has contributed as a referee for numerous Indian and foreign journals, member of the different academic bodies, selection committees, etc., of many universities, state public service commission, college service commission, etc., promoted floriculture and medicinal plants, cultivation in North Bengal, visited different countries with academic assignments. And last but not the least, during COVID pandemic period, Dr. Avaya Prasad Das has delivered around 20 webinar talks for colleges, universities. <laughs> uh, it was written 20, sir. Anyway, thank you. Uh, colleges, universities, and institutes from different corners of East, Northeast, and Southern part of the country. So, as you can see, um, we are really very privileged to have him this evening. And uh, before I request him to deliver his talk, here I would like to mention that if you have any question, I'm uh, talking to the participants, that if you have any questions, you can ask your question on the chat box with your name and designation. And after the talk, we would select few of your questions and ask Dr. Avaya Prasad Das. Thank you. Now I would request Dr. Das to come to the web desk and deliver his lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, Vice Chancellor Sujata Bhakti Banerjee. <clears throat> uh, though I was in government college for 14 years, but I don't think I never made it. Never I made it. <clears throat> I served 
ঝাড়গ্রাম গভর্নমেন্ট কলেজ দার্জিলিং গভর্নমেন্ট কলেজ অ্যান্ড প্রেসিডেন্সি কলেজ এনিওয়ে টুডে ইজ টিচার্স ডে সো আই এক্সটেন্ড মাই গ্রিটিংস টু অল দি টিচার্স অল দি অল পিপল হু আর অ্যাকচুয়ালি টেকিং এডুকেশন আন্ডার টিচার্স অল দি পিপল হু উইল বি টিচার ইন ফিউচার ফর অল Teaching is the most noble job. Still, it is a noble job. Unless uh, you do something which is actually uh, not related to this nobility of this um, job. Uh, otherwise, you are really a noble person. As a teacher, I am teaching for now 45 years. with my experience of 45 years of teaching i feel that you should love your students you should love your subject and you should give time to your students and to your subject just your official class period is your duty period if you think so then sorry you cannot be a successful teacher to be a successful teacher you must devote time full time at least your full time full office hours 10 to 5 okay at least you give this 10 to 5 to your students why not i remember in presidency college i used to enter never before 9 after 9 am so entering at 9 am sometimes leaving at 9:30 10:30 pm from the college so this long stretch i used to work in presidency college before leaving this job because uh, after 7 years they transferred me to hogli mausing college then immediately i shifted to north bengal university so this is one bad side in government service you establish your laboratory establish your research activity then you are transferred to a place where you cannot do anything so that that is the reason i left government college and joined uh, in joined uh, north bengal university actually i retired in 2011 at the age of 60 i retired in 2011 then five years extension in university we were getting five years extension that time now of course rule had changed so with that i finally i left not bengal university in 2016 now i expect that some of my students from other states are here so i opt to speak in english otherwise my students from other states they will be unable to follow my lecture i love my students very much english speaking Uh, from the beginning of my teaching career i used to love my students very much still and now if you visit rajiv gandhi university there you will find students are not calling me sir they are calling me either baba father or dadu grandfather so this is my habit uh, they come very close to us they express their even personal difficulties they seek my help to solve their problems everything a teacher should be like this a teacher should be friend philosopher guy remember today is teacher's day that is why i am speaking all these things anyway now let me start my program is it visible my slide is visible yes sir it is visible yes sir okay, okay fine now i like to test that in full mode it can be transferred or not slide changed slide changed no sir not yet slide changed no sir no that means i have to do of some something else 
Sir, please make it full screen. Yeah, that I'm doing. Yeah. I think I, I have to do like this only. So this is one sir, very rare. Uh, bottom, bottom right, sir. There is a full screen option. No, is there. That, that, that will not work. Somehow this is not working here. I don't know. Okay. I tried. In many cases, I had to offer this opportunity only, this provision only. Uh, anyway, I think this is not bad. You can see. So this is one beautiful relative of our uh, cardamom, wild cardamom. I uh, collected it from Pista Valley, very dangerous place, from Pista Valley, beautiful plant. Uh, then on left hand side, my most preferred orchid, Leon Precox, you know my journal is Leon. My Kolkata house is Pleon Precox. So I love this orchid very much. Then right hand side, Papillon and the Terrace or Bhanda Terrace. This is the commonest orchid in North Bengal University campus. It is abundant. It is abundant. I am yet to grow it in Kolkata, but I shall grow it in Kolkata very soon. Now this year we lost Sundar Lal Bahubur. The actual, actual, actually, he was the lover of biodiversity. You know, his uh, agitations against cutting the trees. I think you know, all of you know. So this year, on 21st May, we lost him. So with my regards to Sundarlal Bahuguna, I like to say something. This is the biodata already. Sandeep <laughs> told it anyway. So you are welcome to Istanbul. Now, what I shall say, that will touch Eastern Himalaya something, sometimes, but not always. And not always I shall remain within the biodiversity because uh, in the title of my lecture, the development, effect of development is there. So effect of development is always hampering biodiversity. I, I mean, the present style of development. So how the present style of development, or better to say the so-called development is affecting the biodiversity, affecting our survivability, that I like to discuss in this talk. I love to start with this quotation. I don't understand why when we destroy something created by man, we call it vandalism. Suppose today I eh, uh, bombed your building and it is broken. You will say it is vandalism. But when we destroy something created by nature, we call it progress. There is a good forest in Murshidabad. So I went there. I finished the forest and constructed a beautiful building for the university. You will say this is progress. I cannot agree with this. Sorry. This is not progress. This is negative progress. This is negative development. And that is why now we are endangered. Now let us come to my lecture. Biodiversity conservation because it's development. So I, I shall put both side by side. Biodiversity, its conservation status, and the effect of development. And what is my experience from Eastern Himalaya? Because my works are mostly related to Eastern Himalayan, flora, vegetation, etc., traditional knowledge, etc. So all these things will be touched in my lecture. Now, there are three aspects. First aspect is biodiversity, second is conservation, and third is impact of development. Remember, man cannot survive alone. If man thinks that this, uh, this planet is theirs, well, though poet said that uh, or the world is his, who is powerful? Only powerful people 
powerful persons, powerful species can rule over the world. But that is wrong. Man is very powerful. <clears throat> Man is very powerful due to his intelligence, but with that power, it is going to destroy its own habitat. What is this? Can we survive in this way? So remember, different species occur together at a place in perfect natural balance and cooperation. Forced modification in balance, in this balance, and stable ecosystem breaks the delicate natural chains and waves. Remember, in nature, everything is occurring through some chains and waves. If you take out anything from this chain, entire chain or entire wave will break. So there is a forest. You have taken out some very big trees that will break the chain, that will break the wave. So the forest, forest structure will be destroyed and finally the forest will be destroyed and finally that will affect on the climate and the biodiversity and of course directly to human life. Remember, remember man is just one of the estimated 7.4 million species on earth. So far the estimate goes, there are many estimates. But this is the reliable, this is one reliable estimate that how many types of organisms are living on this planet? 7.4 million species. And there, man is neither special nor positive. It is not positive because for man's activity, numerous organisms already died and numerous other organisms are going to die. And man is not special. If you say special, then special as a dangerous species. Man is the most dangerous animal on this planet, remember. Man is the most unsympathetic animal on this planet. Don't forget all these things. So earlier we thought all the resources on the planet are for man only. Now we realize that was wrong. If we think only man will survive, then that is not possible. Now we are thinking to import uh, minerals from other planets. Now we are thinking to establish our uh, colonies in other planets. Do you think in other planets when you will develop your colony, will you live there as man or as a robot? Try to think. So now for survival, we have to find out another planet. This is the present situation. We realize this thing. At least scientists realize this thing. At least conservationists realize this thing. But what about politicians? What about bureaucrats? What about our leaders, governments, our industrialists, our businessmen? Do they realize? Do they understand that this development, this way of development is wrong? They should understand. Otherwise, there is danger. Nature actually, natural provides us everything. You enter the vegetation, you can survive. Nature provides everything for survival of all the animals. All animals include man. I hope you will agree, man is one animal. Man is one African animal actually, because so far the, our knowledge goes, man originated in Africa. So man is one African animal. This African animal is too much brainy and too much dangerous because they are utilizing their brain only for destructive purpose, not for any constructive purpose. Present development is just destruction. This is the map of our country. This is not an, one hand-drawn map, but it is based on a satellite imagery. It is not prepared in my laboratory. It is prepared in the forest survey of 
India's headquarter at Dehradun. Here in this map, you see this deep green portions are actually the good forest. And as per ecological estimate, there should have minimum 33.33% land covered with good forest, natural forest, not your uh, dhupi plantations or sagun plantations or uh, like that. Remember. So now here you see how much, how much hardly about 18-19% area is covered. Sometimes they say that the vegetation cover is increasing. I don't believe it. I, I know remote sensing. Some, somewhat I know because I, I am a trained person in remote sensing. Dr. K.K. Das is attending today's, today's meeting. He was my teacher in uh, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing when I was taking my training. So Dr. Das is there. I can say that with little movement of something, some parameter, we can show that forest cover is increasing. If I am really honest, I hope I, we can prove that forest cover is decreasing. It is very difficult, very difficult to express these things because government attitude, government desire, all these things are there. So it is very difficult. Anyway, now <clears throat> you, at least you should understand that there is deficiency of forest and forest cover is dwindling like anything. Every day the forest area is decreasing on this planet. This is the entire Himalayan range and on this eastern part I generally work. And this is the uh, again, the same thing, Himalayan range. This is the area where I generally travel, mostly I travel and work for my different projects with my students. Remember, Eastern Himalaya, especially its holistic diversity and the richness of the vegetation structure is well known. This is actually now, not only now, for about last 300 years, this is the major center for exploitation of plants. Innumerable plants, innumerable species collected from Himalayas, filled in hundreds, hundreds of ships to and carried to Europe and other countries. Now there are many species which are no more available in the Himalayas, but they are available in glass houses, warm houses huh, of European universities or land culture centers. It is there in their H situ conservatories. You will get many Himalayan plants. I remember in Australia, uh, in one uh, West, West, Aust West Australian university. So far, I remember the name. I'm uh, some, somewhat confusing at this moment. Uh, in that university, uh, they took me inside one uh, glass house, that is one warm house. When I entered, I feel I entered a tropical area and there I found uh, two mango plants in flowering condition. They are maintaining that. They are maintaining Indian variety. And in that glass house, in that um, net house, actually mostly Indian species are conserved. Now let us see how many species may be here in our area. Let us take one district, Darjeeling district. In Darjeeling district, this slide is a little more botanical. So here, apart from algae, fungi, lichen, bacteria, virus, you forget these groups because we don't have reliable data for these groups. But for graphite, tetraphyte, gymnosperm, dicots and monocots for these plant groups. So far, our estimate goes to 3,462. Because the flora we are going to publish on Darjeeling district, there we will get this number, minimum. Huh? I think the number will exceed. Sikkim, 
that is a quite small state, smaller than the my original Midnapur district uh, before Medinipur Sensu Lato, not present Purbo and Postim Medinipur, but Medinipur Sensu Lato if you consider, then Sikkim is much smaller than that. So in that Sikkim you see how much? Uh, more than 5,000 types of plants are growing here. And of these, more than 500, 564 or 65 species of wild orchids are growing. Can you imagine in one state, nearly 600 species of orchids are growing in wild conditions? Can you imagine? But if we modify the vegetation, where they will survive? Do you think they can survive within your complete structures? That is impossible. As a rough estimate, this is one rough estimate that Himalayas is actually housing over 10,000 species of higher plants, only higher plants, not, not the lower groups of plants, only higher plants. And of these, nearly 37% are endemic. That means they are either restricted to Himalaya and related areas or only in the Himalaya. Now if you change the Himalayan habitat, how will you get the 37% species of higher plants? Then think of other uh, category of plants and animals, then for microorganisms, etc. So it is a serious condition. And Eastern Himalaya also, over 4,000 species, over 4,000 species of higher plants are there. Uh, then you add to these other groups of plants, then other groups of animals, etc. Then where your biodiversity status will stand. And we are now active to destroy all these things. Actually, our exploration is incomplete. It is very difficult to get proper funding for exploration work. If you want to purchase one costly instrument, you will get the fund. But if you want to explore one good place nicely, fund is difficult to get. Uh, for some people, science means costly instruments. If you are working with costly instruments, then you are a scientist. If you are not using costly instruments, then you are not a scientist. I don't love this idea. I don't support this idea. This is a completely wrong idea. Even then, in this condition, uh, under this much of disturbance, we are now getting new species. Here you see, these are all recorded from North Bengal University. See, this rhododendron ovoid named after me. This is from Siki. This is Lindarnia terai, collected from Terai region uh, in West Bengal. This is Nymphia ovoid, Avayana, again from Jalpaiguri district. Uh, this is also named after me. Then Globba Teres. This is from uh, Globba Tista, sorry, Globba Tista. This is we collected from Tista Valley. So there is another road and of course from Darjeeling uh, named after me. That is Rhododendron Hawaii. So two Rhododendrons so far have been named after me. And very recently, my students from Arunachal Pradesh, they named one plant Henkelia, Henkelia Dasi. After my surname Das, it is named Henkelia Dasi. So that is also a beautiful plant from Arunachal Pradesh. So after reaching to Arunachal, you see how many new species we are regularly we are reporting. This is not all. This is just a few of the new species uh, we have reported from Arunachal Pradesh very recently after I migrated to Arunachal Pradesh in 2017. After that, we started discovering new species uh, almost regularly from different corners of Arunachal Pradesh. For the people going to Darjeeling, tourist season is coming, puja is coming, tourist season, you will go to Darjeeling. And from Darjeeling, with many other things, we will also purchase Darjeeling tea. But I don't know how many of you know how to
consume that chili meat. If you boil tea, then you are taking poison, remember. Unfortunately, most of the people boil tea, then they consume. Remember, that is equivalent to consuming slow poison. Hmm. Don't boil tea. Anyway, so when you will go to Darjeeling, suppose you are moving from Siliguri to Mirik, or from Darjeeling to Mirik to Siliguri, this road, whole road, both, both sides, there are tea gardens. I shall show you the photo. Both sides full of tea gardens. All these places were previously covered with natural forests, natural vegetations, with naturally occurring thousands of species of plants, animals, microbes. Where are they now? Certainly we have killed them. Uh, because now we do not find them. We have killed them. So actually, this area is better to refer as free teach. It is important for three things. Generally, people say three things for development, tea, timber, tourism. But for me, these are three T's of destruction, not development. Three T for D, three T for develop, not development, three T for destruction. When you are taking destruction, you are destroying the vegetation, you are modifying the climate, you are changing the habitable conditions, everything. Just concretization is not creation of good environment. Remember, if the concrete is essential for our survival, then what about our parents who are living in forest before the discovery of concrete, before the discovery of this construction of houses, etc. How they survive? Try to think. Then tourism. Tourism is really dangerous. For tourism, no rule will be maintained. Rules are just copybook things. Keep it in the books. Don't try to impose it. So, conservation. Government think that conservation is meant for business. That is why conservation is not possible. So, these three T's are actually the main destroyer of biodiversity of this entire area. Not only of Darjeeling, Sikkim, uh, it is for the entire Eastern Himalaya. In Arunachal also I find these three trees are uh, becoming dangerous. Actually, habitat becomes so much fragmented. If you think plants cannot migrate, then you are wrong. Plants can migrate from one place to other place very easily. Otherwise, how you get one particular plant in many places. Certainly, the plant was originated at one place. From that place, it migrated to other places. Like man, man originated in Africa, in Jayar. From Jayar, they migrated to all corners of this plant. Similarly, a species of plant also originated at one particular place. From that place, it migrated to different places. So, plants also need migration. If they cannot migrate, they cannot survive. No species can survive without migration, remember. So migration is very important. Yes. See, look at this tea garden. Sum tea estate in Darjeeling. If you have any idea about Darjeeling, so from North Point, you go down beside St. Joseph's College, go down, down, and down. Eh? And finally, you will reach Sum estate. Sum tea estate. This is Sum tea estate. So here the central altitude is about 1800 meter. You see in this tea garden, at the center, there is a big patch of natural forest, natural vegetation. Suppose one new species originated here. Now, how that new species will migrate to other vegetations? Because this natural vegetation is surrounded by tea gardens. And in these tea gardens, every day we are operating our cleaning operations. We are injecting or spraying dangerous chemicals to kill any other plant, any other animal uh, um, intending to live there or grow there. So no plant, no animal can come out of this. So it will be standard there. Finally, it will weaken and will die. 
This is one hillock situated in between uh, our uh, Ghum station and uh, Man uh, Manavanjan. In between Ghum station and Manavanjan, when you are uh, progressing towards Manavanjan from Ghum, it will be on your right, left hand side below. So this hillock was very favorite to me. Quite often I used to visit it when I was in Dakhili during 79 to 83. Regularly I used to visit at least once in every month I was visiting it. So uh, the reason, what is the reason? The reason is so many types of wild orchids and many other rare plants are growing there. Then I left Darjeeling, eh? left Darjeeling, left Presidency College. Then I was in North Bengal University. My one student uh, from Ohio State University, uh, she was here. So with her, we are in the field. So again, we are following the same road. We are walking, not on vehicle. Remember, field work on uh, nowadays, excursion, I don't think nowadays this excursion is excursion. For excursion, you need a good hotel, you need a good accommodation in train, you need a good vehicle to move. This is not excursion. I don't like it. Uh, but um, present day excursion is like that only. And that is why nowadays I do not take part in excursions. For the last few years of my service, I did not take part in long excursion because that is just a comfort that. Anyway, so uh, that day, when I reached to this place, I was about to explain the rare plants present there to my foreign students. But when I reached there, I find everything has gone. Entire hillock has been modified into a crop plant. You will be happy, eh? happy because crops will be produced there. But for me, we have lost so many rare plants, so many rare orchids. What are they? We killed them mercilessly without any consideration. And we say that we are uh, thinking for conservation, we are conserving nature, etc., etc., all these big, big bugs. So these are nothing but big bugs, useless. You see, this is the road towards your Mirik, Mirik road. All by all hill surface, entire hill surface has been modified it into uh, tea gardens. Remember, before the establishment of tea gardens in early 19th century, all these places were covered with forests and natural forests, not your dhupi forest. Remember, dhupi is also introduced and not our Indian plant. In Darje, when you are entering Darjeeling, you say. If, if you do not, uh, you cannot uh, recognize or if you cannot, you cannot uh, distinguish between dhupi and pine, then you will say pine forest. No, those are not pine forest. Those are dhupi forest. Dhupi is introduced plant from Japan. Uh, so that either dhupi forest or your this tea forest, tea vegetation, tea, tea bushes. So these have actually destroyed our biodiversity like anything. You see, in this way, you spray chemicals in tea gardens and we destroy everything, whatever is there in the floor of tea garden. We do not allow any other plant or any other animal or microbe to survive here. I don't know in this way how long this artificial ecosystem will survive. And I'm afraid very soon our tea gardens will suffer um, a big setback. Uh, I established the uh, Department of Tea Science in North Bengal University. So I'm having some weak point for tea also. But at the same time, I understand that due to tea cultivation, this um, uh, the biodiversity of the entire area has been disbalanced and destroyed. And this is that dhupi. We, when you are entering Darjeeling, you can find. Now if you enter in one dhupi forest, you will find in the forest floor, there is no plant. Forest floor em empty, empty. There is no plant, no animal. Huh? Why? Because the these plants create the environment in such a way, it is dark, 
the uh, dead plant, dead branches, leaves, etc., falling. Those are not decomposing because they are decomposing um, fungi, bacteria. They are not available in our habitat, <clears throat> so it is not decomposing. So when you will work, it will just like as as if you are uh, working on a sponge, you know, uh, on a uh, uh, your uh, when you work on your bed, you it is it is always bumping. So you will feel that bumping condition. And if you enter your hand inside, you will find it is very warm. And if you test it, it is very uh, sour. So it is acidic. It is warm. It is uh, not decomposing, not producing soil. There is no end of light. So it is not permitting any plants, animals, or microbes to survive here. So that is why we are always against this plantation, Tupi plantation in Himalayas. <clears throat> this is a town of Northeast. I first visited this place in 2001. 2001, that time it was a very small marketplace, only few shops, one or two, just two story hotels like that. I did there at around 4, 430, everything was closed. And only my host was waiting with his vehicle. After my arrival, I left my vehicle and migrated to um, one university, very small university guest house that was there. <clears throat> now, again, in 2011, after 10 years, now I visit that place every year, but in between these 10 years, I have not visited that place. In 2011, when I visited that place, I was surprised. Where is that small town? It's a big, very big, just a city. And you see how this concrete is eating away the forest. Concrete is eating away the forest. In its numerous uh, fingers, concrete is eating away the forest. You will say this is development. I will say this is destruction. Destruction of biodiversity. Destruction of our uh, green resources. So this is the condition. This place is Mokokchom of Nagaland. Mokokchom of Nagaland. If you go to the headquarter of Nagaland University, then you have to go to Mokokchom and accommodation is mostly in Mokokchom and the university is at Lumami that is quite hard for Mokokcho. One day I was descending at Jorhat Airport. So from, from the airport window I spotted this. Are you, what is happening here? People started cultivation on this natural drainage system. Uh, some places they are constructing small houses also in this drainage system. Then what is the future? In future, all the drainage system will be clogged. There will be flood and people will start shouting. Government is not looking after us and we are suffering from flood. This will be the condition. And for us, grasslands or wetlands are useless area. So you fill up those and develop multi story building. <laughs> this idea we have to change. We have to change. Immediately we have to change, otherwise we cannot survive. And this grassland, this is not a very easy place, remember? This is Jaldapada National Park. Previously it was Jaldapada Wildlife Sanctuary. So if you enter this grassland, that at any moment you may be attacked by king cobra, or by elephant, or by rhino, or by many other animals you can be. But we work in these grasses. We are not so afraid. You enter within these grasses and you used to work. There are days after days. Not that just one day visit somehow. It is not like that. And for many years, we are working in Jallapara for many years. Still we are working in Jallapara with uh, uh, some laboratories of North Bengal University. We are working in Jallapara. See, this lady, this lady, my other American student, 
she is basically from ohio state university then if there is nothing in this grassland of jallapara then why us government gave her that much of money to come here stay here and work there for months together why if there is nothing and she was from my laboratory now she is i was a professor in a, uh, in, in the e science department of national university they are our field assistants so we are working there so if there is nothing in this grasslands then why why these people are come hmm? we conserve many areas we say that this is mahananda wildlife sanctuary if it is a wildlife sanctuary then wildlife should have freedom full freedom wild plants wild animals wild microbes all should have full freedom now we are road from siliguri the sebok road is going towards sebok pista and eh, through this mahananda wildlife sanctuary in the evening you go to local police and ask sir is there any accident on sebok road today police no no today there is no accident but sir i got the news uh, one jackal was run over two snakes were actually completely smashed a uh, few monkeys were dashed are we were seeing about the accident and these are not accident these are not accident you see within wildlife sanctuary you are killing animals and our administration says that these are not accident then what type of conservation is this is it not do you like this conservation huh? so this is the happening this is also within mohananda wildlife sanctuary huh? still we are running our train with good speed we are running our vehicle with good speed through these protected areas huh? in uh, terai and duas we are maintaining this thing if we like to slow down people will shout why are you slowing down but if you run then this will happen so this conflict will be there because man is the most selfish animal they understand they are personal benefit only they don't understand this personal benefit is a very short living very short living in the next moment it will uh, you know move like uh, it will bounce back and will hit so here you see forest department people they are killing the tree by debarking debarking they are killing the tree this is from also from jaldapara do you think the rhino is happy over this you look at the eye no if the rhino is not happy they don't trust you even you see all these photos from jaldapara they don't even trust you huh okay they are not attacking you correct they are not attacking you huh? but they do not trust you if you ask them to come to you they will not come to you huh? then they will attack you this is you see another tragedy the date is also given 10th may 2017 at bagdogra people poisoned this elephant poisoned this elephant so elephant died and after it they they started worshiping this worthless people huh? why are you worshiping or oh, you killed it and then you are worshiping the dead body <laughs> very difficult very difficult to understand this human species they don't understand their own good also huh? they kill it and now worship it and do they think that again it will get up then why you poisoned it now every day how many people move to sandakpur those who are going to darjeeling during vacations some of you generally think that you will also visit sandakpur you go by mostly go by foot trekking trekking road you follow the trekking road and it takes generally two days in some cases three days to reach uh, the sandakpur 
uh, vehicles are there, but only one or two types of vehicles can reach there, remember. Not any type of vehicle can reach there. The road condition, road structure is like that. Now at Sandakpu, what is the altitude? Uh, 360, uh, uh, three, 3360, yeah. 3360, 3360, 3360 meter altitude is Sandakpu. That means this is one uh, uh, semi alpine area. <clears throat> Not alpine, just below that semi alpine area. In this, in this area, quite a few months, everything remained covered with snow and quite a few months, about about eight months, it remained uh, free from snow. Now this, so this is a cold place. Now when the tourists are reaching there, after arrival to Sandakpu, what they need? First they need one good warm accommodation. Second they need warm drink, warm food, is it not everything warm? But warm fire from that warmth will come to that difficult trekking road. How many gas cylinders you can carry from Manebanjan or Ganda, Darjeeling or Manebanjan to Sandaku? Very difficult work, very difficult work. Then how they are managing? Remember this Sandaku village area where this tourist spot is there that is surrounded by Kanchanjanga National Park. The rule is that from a national park, you are not permitted to take out even a single dead leaf. That is the rule. Rule is very strict. But who is looking after that? You see, these plants are being cut. These are very rare rhododendrons. These rare rhododendrons are cut by the local people and packed and taking to the kitchen so that you people can enjoy. You will say we paid for our enjoyment, we paid for our comfort, then we can, we don't understand where from you are bringing warmth. We need warmth to enjoy, to supply warmth. Again, when you will teach your son or your, your children at home, you will say, Conservation is very important. Is it the way of conservation? Try to think. So, today's tea gardens, dhupi plantations have replaced native vegetation, evicting thousands of local species of plants and animals from their own natural home. Remember, it, is, it was their home. Who evicted them? All these all the plants, all the animals, all the microbes, we evicted them from their home. It, is, it was not man's home. For man, one Himalayan black bear home, the Himalayan black bear share, and man's share should have been same. If you consider the nature as your mother, nature is having 7.4 million children. Man is just one of them. So, black bear is one child, man is one child. So, the sharing should be equal. But man thinks that no, 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 everything is for man's only. So, they are taking, uh, taking out everything for man's only, and conflict is there, destruction is there. Uh, for that attitude only. I think most of you have. Uh, learn the or know the name of this IUCN, International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. But now the name has been shortened, uh, World Conservation Union. But the abbreviation IUCN is to be there. IUCN actually looks after these conservation activities throughout the world. It is not any government agency. It is one NGO type, but they frame the strategy and more, all countries are supposed to abide 
those things, their instructions, uh, and follow uh, the guideline for conservation. So IUCN is such an important concept. Now IUCN considered that, and at the beginning actually IUCN declared that there are 12 mega diversity country where the biological diversity is very high. There are 12 mega diversity countries. And within that, India was in very good position. And now, 17 countries have been considered as mega diversity countries, mega diverse countries. And these mega diversity countries actually, they are uh, the houses of most of these species of plants and animals, mainly plants. Remember, when you go to uh, conservatories, you want to see the animals mostly. But when we go to conservatories, we want to see plants mainly. Because without plants, animals cannot survive. All animals are parasitic on plants. If there is no plant, no animal can survive. Remember, even man cannot survive. You, you think all your food are plant derivatives. Even your meat is plant derivatives. Remember, your uh, food, online food you are purchasing, those are also plant derivatives. Everything plant derivatives. So without food, you cannot survive. So for your survival, you need plants. So these are the different, uh, different uh, mega diversity countries. They are rank uh, for uh, higher plants, animals, birds, etc., etc. So uh, this is not essential to remember. But <clears throat> do you think that we are having com complete knowledge about our biodiversity? No, we don't have. For that, we need field taxonomists. But field taxonomists are rare. Government do not support taxonomists because they do not use costly instruments, so they are not scientists. Huh? <laughs> this, I don't know when government will realize taxonomists are more important than molecular biologists. Taxonomy is more important branch than molecular biology branch. They, they should understand this. So this is a big problem. Now, remember, India is also a mega diversity country. But do we know the flora, fauna of our all protected areas, our national parks, our wildlife sanctuaries, etc.? We don't. For survey, you enter the vegetation. Okay. You say, no, I am a big scientist, you enter the vegetation. But after entering the vegetation, will you be able to identify plants, identify animals, identify microbes? If you are not a trained taxonomist, you cannot do that. So try to think one cytologist or numerical or molecular or phytochemical taxonomy cannot do this work. For that we need field taxonomists, field biologists. They are trained for that only. They can go to field, they can recognize plants, animals and microbes in field condition. Then they give the final touches in laboratory. Uh, for that, in most of the cases, we do not need very sophisticated instruments. But sometimes we can also use any type of sophisticated instrument. We can use uh, RP, uh, we, can, we can use PCR, uh, everything, all, 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 all types of instruments we can use in our laboratory. Now come to conservation. Conservation is mainly two types. In situ conservation, ex situ conservation. In situ means you conserve the home. You keep these plants and animals at their home. Don't disturb it. But what we do? We say Jaldapara is rhino sanctuary. Okay, fine. If it is a rhino sanctuary, then rhinos will be there. And along with rhino, other plants and animals will be there. Then why are you taking tourists inside it regularly? Why in Mahananda you are taking tourists every day? Uh, regularly. Why? Not only in day, even in night. There is night safari also. You are taking them. You will say that is uh, tourism. 
we are earning for tourism but you are disturbing the wildlife remember because that is a conservatory in conservatory wildlife is supposed to stay without disturbance but you are disturbing then x situ x situ means you will take out few species from their natural home because they are become rare or becoming weak in natural condition we take them in some special consideration special uh, uh, care in our special gardens special laboratory and multiply them stain them them and sometimes return them to their homes also so this is one ex situ conservatory q garden q botanic garden uh, thingland <clears throat> so they are very rich people they can maintain few thousand species okay but how many million species are there how many million species they can conserve can they conserve just 1 million species it is very difficult it is almost impossible so if you say artificially you can save all species then i do not agree with you you cannot do that so at least 7.4 million species how many species you can protect artificially and how long how long in my garden in north bengal university there are when i left in 2016 there are around 800 species in living condition but now you go there <laughs> I, i don't like to mention but i know that so many species has already extinct from the garden in my garden i brought them from so many places not only from different parts of the country even from other countries i smuggled plants from other countries and instead of bringing electronics or costly things i brought i i smuggled plants from other country but what they are now and project west conservatory that too much small you are having a project or a exit to conservation project so you developed a small a glass house a small garden so so long project is there you are taking care for those few plants after the project is over you will not take care of them whole take care most of the forest department gardens are these project based gardens and so after the projects are over even the forest department gardens turns into very bad condition and many of those they discontinue to maintain that is the condition so highly sophisticated techniques are very costly that is for so you will say now uh, we shall conserve uh, seeds in nitrogen liquid nitrogen how long you can conserve after 200 years when you will take out the seeds and allow to germinate do you think they will get the same environment they will be able to sustain in that environmental condition how many seeds of how many species you can conserve in the liquid nitrogen try to think so without special interest you will not do anything you without good publication eh? <laughs> good impact factor wala journal eh? uh, your promotion will be uh, in jeopardy so you are you are not thinking for anything you are just thinking for your uh, high impact publication only you are not doing any good job so this type of conservation is useless and conservation of microbes is much more costly then for in situ conservation this is the entrance to gorumara national park at the distance you can see the forest that is gorumara national park in front there is tea garden so animals can come out to tea garden any moment when they are coming out to tea garden people are chasing them they are killing them then you go this way and finally you enter gorumara national park there is also tourism uh, every day uh, hundreds of vehicles are entering there with tourists and this is the entrance to jalnapada national park you say uh, uh, rhinos are on cut stump again these cut stumps are not actually timber these are concrete concrete cut stumps it was better to keep the rhinos on soil so to maintain the rhino they are cutting trees 
you like to say like that or trees are or rhinos are killing the trees i don't know what was the philosophy behind this gate but they constructed this gate huh? uh, but i never accepted this as good for uh, good gate for a rhino sanctuary now suppose you are thinking to conserve red panda red panda lives in darjeeling in some part of eastern nepal in bhutan in sikkim in tibet now for proper conservation of red panda you need to develop one protected area so that protected area should cover all these places that will cover some part of india some part of nepal some part of bhutan some part of china that is tibet then only you can develop one good protected area this type of protected area are referred as trans boundary protected areas trans boundary protected areas are very difficult to establish you see the procedure is so long procedure to establish one trans boundary protected area but this is very much important in our area we tried to do it but we failed but in africa you see they are very much successful uh, these are all these are all small countries but these all small countries they agreed and they maintained the protected area these are all trans boundary protected area uh, here we tried taking from tibet from nepal and from kanchenjunga that is from uh, sikkim we have taken some protected areas and we wanted to combine them and to develop one trans boundary protected area but our attempt was failed not successful now iucn thought that okay let us find out the uh, biodiversity rich areas when they are looking for that they found that is yes, himalaya suppose himalaya is a very rich biodiversity rich area but how species will survive there more than 75% more than 80% uh, natural habitat is lost then how naturally occurring species will survive there so with such ideas they they, they finally declared hotspots interestingly in exam when i set question i write hotspot as single word and trace will even if i write in bangla that please write in one word in bangla i mention even then they will print it hot and spot two separate words anyway when you will write please write one word hot spot not hot spot it is hot spot so they declare some hot spot what is a hot spot a hot spot is one wide area very wide area which is basically very rich in biodiversity with very high degree of endemism in such areas in such areas at least 75% of the natural habitat is lost such areas are treated as hotspots so far so far 36 so far 36 hotspots have been recognized by uh iucn latest one is the central plains central central plains of north america this one central plains of north america in this area in this area is the latest one uh, otherwise uh, there was 35 before that latest was this uh, forest of east australia that is 34 that was the latest previously and now latest is this 36 central plains of north america that is the latest declared hotspot if you know 35 then you add this one so these are different hotspots remember in these areas species diversity is basically very high but at least 75% of the natural habitat has been lost that is the tragedy then Yeah. Do we have? Yes. Now, out of these, these ten hotspots, 
I have selected ten hotspots here. These ten hotspots are threatened, most threatened hotspots, huh? according to the level of threat it is sequenced here. So the highest threat is for Cerrado. Next comes to Himalayas. Next is Polynesia, Micronesia. Indo Burma is also threatened. Where is Himalaya? Here is this is Himalaya hotspot. Himalaya hotspot. This is Indo Burma hotspot. This is Indo Burma hotspot. Polynesia hotspot. Uh, Polynesia hotspot. So these are all highly threatened. Uh, highly threatened. Highly threatened. That means they are their threat status is much higher than other hotspot areas. In this condition, I don't know how long we, we, we shall shout that yes, our Himalaya is biodiversity so much rich. How long you will be able to shout? Very soon, Himalaya will lose its place. You see, this is our area. How many hotspots are aggregated here? This is mountains of Central Asia hotspot, Himalaya hotspot, Indo Burma hotspot, mountains of Southeast Asia, Southeast China hotspot. So many hotspots aggregated there. And it is continued towards towards below also. Eh? Continuous hotspots are there. So this area is actually biodiversity is that much rich. Actually, higher plants originated here in Indo Burma region. In this region, higher plants originated here in Ornachal Myanmar region. From there, they migrated to other parts of the world, as per Takajan's hypothesis. Uh, so we also there are many other troops are also there that uh, natural Myanmar region most probably the place of origin of angiosperm. So we are living in this area, but how much we are concerned to protect our biodiversity is very difficult. Yeah, this is the present structure of Indo Burma hotspot. This is Himalaya hotspot. You see, in the Himalayas. At least 10,000 species of higher plants, higher plants of which 31.6% are endemic. To look at the amphibians here, frogs, etc., toads, frogs, etc., 40% are endemic. That means they are available only in the Himalayan region. Now, if you destroy the Himalayan habitat, how these 40% amphibians will survive? Eh? 27% reptiles endemic. Where they will go if you destroy their habitat? So you just reading conservation or getting better marks in exam. But when you are in duty, you are not doing the work. You are not conserving anything seriously. Now let me take one small area of our state, West Bengal. West Bengal, I generally refer to Bangla. In Bangla, I have taken eh, only this small portion, only this small portion, Darjeeling Hills, there are dwarfs. Only this area, only this area I have taken. And you see how many protected areas are there. How many protected areas? One, one single area biosphere reserve, which is proposed since long, eh, when in 1990 I. Uh, joined the North Bengal University. From that time, I know that yeah, there is a proposal. It is still a proposal. <laughs> now, uh, there is another proposal uh, that the Terai Dwarf's entire area should be considered as a biosphere reserve, but no final action. There are many reasons, not good reasons, there are many reasons that these things are difficult to implement. Reasons are not good. I cannot spell out here. This is one official meeting. So, uh, then national parks, five national parks are here. Singalila, Nara Valley, Gorumara, Boksa, Jaga Park. And I work in all these, all these five uh, national parks. Then, seven, six, six wildlife sanctuaries are there. Latest one is Pokhibitan in Jalpaiguri. That is one bird sanctuary. Now for Sikkim also you see one biosphere reserve, one national park and so many 
wildlife sanctuaries in Assam, say in Manipur, in Nepal, you see, in Bhutan. This building is one interesting building. This is actually the birthplace of Bhutan because first Bhutan king was coronated inside this building. I have seen their parental house uh, on roadside uh, when we are moving from uh, Assam to uh, Trongsa, Trongsa district, Trongsa town in central Bhutan, that on the way, and the place is called Galangpur, from Galangpur to Trongsa. So on midway, their village, their parental house is still there, the king's family's original house it is still there. But anyway, first Bhutan king was coronated in this building. But this is mainly controlled by the monks. So anyway, unless you enter in this building, you cannot understand its uniqueness. It is really unique. You should visit at least Trongsa. Strong side easier to visit and see this building and enter this building as a tourist. So these are the protected areas in Bhutan. In Bhutan, protected areas are much better maintained, much better. I should say much better. I cannot say completely, but I should say much better maintained than India. In Tibet also, Tibet also same thing, big list. But conservation status very poor. Now, when you are killing a tree, you enter the forest and you look at a very tall tree. Oh, such a huge tree. So much of timber will come out. I will be rich for a few days. You will be rich for a few days only, remember. A few lakhs rupees you can earn from this tree, but within a few days you will spend that money. Is it not? But this tree is keeping thousands of organisms living, surviving on its own surface and at its feet. Thousands of plants, animals, microbes are surviving based on this. So this is a mini forest actually. Huh? This is a mini forest. So when you are cutting a tree, actually you are cutting a forest, a mini forest. Remember, you are not killing just one tree. Don't say you are cutting. You are killing. You are killing a tree. You are not killing just one plant. You are killing thousands of plants and animals when you are killing just one tree. Remember. Unknowingly, of course, if you are a little sensitive person, then you will understand, yes, you are killing many other plants and animals not just one tree. Huh? And just you look at this unique forest. I say these are unique forests. A tree constitute one unique forest. You look at this uh, tree branch, two tree branch, what is not there? Uh, two species of two species of lycopodium. Huh? So many orchids, so many species of orchids, ferns, lichens, algae, fungi, what not? Everything is there, mosses, everything is there. Everything is there. So is it not a mini forest? So when you are cutting or killing one tree, huh? or you can say um, <coughs> slaughtering one tree, then remember you are slaughtering hundreds, not only hundreds, thousands of other plants and microbes huh? and animals you are slaughtering. Remember this thing. So for the sake of conservation, what we should do? That is very difficult to maintain. We have to sacrifice many of our present economic programs. Stop our extension of our Rangpur Railroad. Immediately Sikkim people will embrace. Stop the extension of our, uh, this Kolkata to this, uh, our Asia Road. Uh, what is that? Sark, Sark Road construction of SARC road, all SARC countries will end. So all development will stop. Contractors will not get work. If contractors do not get money, then how many other people, uh, many other people will get money, is it not? <laughs> so it is very difficult to control our economic programs. 
politicians should realize the importance of conservation through their heart no they don't understand they understand only money eh? only money only share nothing more so they cannot do it they will not realize it they will help you to establish one particular area but immediately they will start business over it that is the problem so conservation should be treated as one development program otherwise you cannot do it and no business with conservation stop business if you are interested to see wildlife take training and walk inside as ratanlal brahmachari used to do he was walking with one uh, bodyguard he was walking within the forest in africa and that bodyguard was not having any permission to shoot any animal <laughs> that type of protection he was taking and he was traveling in so many eh, wildlife sanctuaries and national parks in, us, in africa but you people need to own comfortable vehicles at least on elephant elephant back on howdah uh, then only you will enter you have to give up all these things otherwise sorry you cannot You are, you are not helping in conservation. You are working against it. So years are declared. So now I believe that protected areas are declared for business only, not for conservation. That is the tragedy. This is Darjeeling Hill area. This map, of course, prepared in our lab, own lab, from little old imagery. so from little old imagery we can get that these are good forests in darjeeling hills how much let us take more detail map here you see this dark green portions this dark green portions are good forest then in darjeeling hills where is good forest where is natural forest everything we have finished so these two maps of course prepared in my own lab then we started thinking of kollu Okay, few few protected areas are there in Darjeeling Hills. At least four, five protected areas are there. You, if we can connect them by corridors. Remember, these corridors are not uh, your concrete roads. <laughs> these are not concrete structures. These are not bridges. Not like that. These are we have to develop nature-like trails. We have to. Uh, develop nature like trail means wild plants wild plants uh, maybe 1 km 2 km broad area uh, running between one protected area to another protected area maybe between mohananda to uh, nawra valley nawra valley to central central to singalila in that way we have to develop such uh, forested corridors remember these are not concrete corridors these are forested corridors we we wanted to develop something with the aid of isimod kathmandu we developed this map and we saw that how we can connect these four protected areas this is singalila this is central wildlife sanctuary this is mohananda wildlife sanctuary this is nawra valley uh, national park so we wanted to connect them so this this was our proposal that central to singalila this could be the road on this these are the disturbances none of these disturbances are i mean private disturbances these are all government government area people occupied it and using the, as their own own places but when we placed our data then the sociology group started shouting no no you cannot disturb the human human settlements you should not disturb then i said then uh, how the conservation uh, will be possible no they will not go to forest if you supply them kerosene free of cost lpg free of cost then i laughed and said if you give them lpg kerosene free of cost then if there are 10 houses today by year and there will be 40 houses so your entire program will go nice 
So that time we failed. Now we were not successful to develop this corridor project also. We are not successful. Here, these white areas, these are our proposed corridors. And in many corridor area, we mark the uh, route also. But sorry, we are not successful. Uh, because usually the politicians, developers, bureaucrats, they will not happy in, in this type of work. So as I am saying from the beginning, conservation and commercial exploitation cannot go hand in hand. Impossible. They cannot work together. And you see now, IFS officers are in charge of looking everything, forest, forest conservation, everything, forest exploitation. They know very well how to exploit forest. But conservation, I got every doubt. Because one electronic person, electronic engineer, eh? he is a DFO in charge of one national park. What type of conservation he will do? What he understand, how much sympathy he is having about the plants? So government need to change some of its strategies also, as I feel. Eh? As I feel, the strategies may need to change, actually. Uh, if government really think for conservation. And attitude of local people, attitude of local people, city people, what local people think that this is our um, uh, our, our property, we can take anything from forest. And city people, no, we have paid for forest, we have paid for our comfort, our, our enjoyment, our happiness. So we should get it, whatever may be, conservation is there or not, who cares? We need comfort, we need happiness, enjoyment, because we paid for it. And our Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, <laughs> from my own experience, I like to say, they are nothing but NOC issuing agencies, huh? no objection certificate. One politician wanted that, here will be one industry, eh? but there is a forest. So immediately one EIA EMP will be prepared and in that EIA EMP, nothing will be written against the industry, remember. If you write, it is very difficult to get the fund. You will not get the fund. Or sometimes your life may be in danger that I experienced in my life. Uh, so it is very difficult. And when you present, uh, okay, 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 it is past, 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 past. Everything is government. Uh, they will pass. So the forest will go. Uh, for this Hong Kong railway, new, uh, um, this bullet train railway, what is going on? How many trees we are cutting? Uh, millions of trees will be cut down. Lataguri, I, I will come to Lataguri later on. Unfortunately, everything is linked to ballot box. Everything is linked to ballot box. Politicians, bureaucrats, etc., they will work in such way that the one particular group of politicians get more vote. Uh, so that they can exploit the thing. This is the condition. Now come to see how spillover of development is destroying our future. <coughs> These photographs are from Bangalore. And Bangalore, few lakes are catching fire. Catching fire. Especially during 2014 to 2018, 2014 to 2018, every year these lakes were catching fire. So much pollution, so much pollution were accumulating in these lakes that every year they were catching fire. In some areas of Bangalore, uh, so much of foam is produced in local water bodies, water channels, etc., that uh, migrate to roads and vehicles move through those pops. Uh, 
so that is the condition so lakes catching fire in my own country that is really dangerous thing and you are mad of eating ilsa ilis uh, why ilis is not coming why good ilis is not coming why ilis is, uh, is so costly you are always shouting but how ilis will come you are catching all fish you are catching all you are killing all fishes all animals in the ocean you are polluting it you are ejecting your um, all uh, polluted water from your industry into the ocean everything at every step you are polluting water then how different animals will survive there will it size also one animal it is also one animal huh? or it survival remember oceanic condition is dangerous oceanic condition is dangerous because uh, that, that is indicated very nicely by coral reef you see coral reefs are dying in australia uh, most of the coral reefs will die very soon within within a decade or so all coral reefs will die coral the dying of coral reefs is a good indicator of pollution huh? ocean water pollution remember the oxygen you inhale the oxygen you inhale that is produced by plants but remember only 40% of the atmospheric oxygen is produced by land plants 60% of the oxygen atmospheric oxygen is produced by phytoplankton that means microscopic plants present in oceanic water they produce 60% oxygen now if the ocean water poison then all these microscopic plants will die and this 60% oxygen producing industry will shut down then how will you survive without oxygen can you survive try to think what was wrong with this turtle you see why uh, it is suffering so much huh? look at this bird this photograph was taken in a very remote island for very rarely maybe in 5 years one or two people used to visit that island this is not one inhabiting island so uh, there this dead bird's body that bird's inside is full of plastic see this dead whale below from its stomach all plastics are coming out how these animals will survive they are they think that this is one edible thing and they consume then finally these are not digested accumulate inside their belly inside their stomach and finally they die this is the great pacific garbage 1.6 million square kilometer area is covered with plastics on pacific ocean and it is increasing every day because we don't have any control over, over plastic use of plastic how many of you refuse plastic in the market and huh? whenever you are going to a shop if the shopkeeper do not give you plastic you will angry hey give me one plastic why you cannot say no no don't give me one plastic don't give me plastic i do it please try to do this don't take plastic refuse plastic in the market everywhere you try to refuse plastic we have to refuse plastic certainly otherwise it is difficult to survive only plastic will kill us very soon even in our you know the paper takes about one month to decompose cloth about five months aluminium about 500 years and plastic 10 lakhs years to decompose nowadays this is a common practice in different ceremonies etc the use of our programs use of thermocol plates very good looking thermocol plates the use of thermocol plates it is unhygienic very much unhygienic not only unhygienic it is very much non hygienic and it is high polluted highly polluted huh? you refuse thermocol refuse thermocol i refuse thermocol even in my relative house in program i refuse thermocol no if you give me food in some 
other plate, maybe lead, maybe paper, uh, maybe some metallic, then I shall take food. Otherwise, I shall not take food in your thermocol plate. Refuse thermocol. Refuse plastic. Plastic. Otherwise, you will be in danger. Remember. We are using these leaf plates for thousands of years in our country. When I was in Medinipur town for my college or my first appointment in Dharjan, Jhargram Government College, I remember shopkeepers are always giving sal, sal leaf plates. Sal leaf plates, you see, they are collected sal leaves and preparing uh, these plates, different types of containers, etc. Uh, that was very nice. It was having a different aroma also. I liked that very much. Recently, I contacted my friend. He is a doctor at Jhargram. Are, can you take some photograph that shopkeepers are using sal, sal leaves, sal plates, etc. Then he said, now no one uses sal leaves, sal, sal plates in Jhargram itself. It's a, really a setback for me. They should not they should not discontinue the use of sal leaves. You will say sal plants will be disturbed. No. They collect leaves only from lower branches. Sal is a big tree. Almost they are using it for thousands of years. And now you say sal conservation will be affected. We are not conserving sal. If there is a big sal, immediately we shall cut it down. Uh, just near the hospital in Jhargam. How many big trees, salt trees were there uh, earlier in 1976? How many I have seen? And now in 2021, how many are remaining there? Just calculate. Uh, inside the city, even getting vanished overnight. This is the condition. Interestingly, now German developers, they developed these paper plates. And they started marketing paper plates with very good price. Huh? We are using it for hundreds of years, thousands of years. We are not marketing it. But Germans, most probably some of them have seen it in our country. And now they took this idea silently in their brain. Huh? And then they started developing it in their country and started marketing it. When our government will know all these things, when they will do it. Huh? Now, of course, this lower line, you see, this is also German. This upper, both both the photos, the upper photos are German plates. But both the lower photos, both, all three lower photos are from our country. What is this material? This is the leaf seed of your uh, betel nut, betel nut cake. Lower seed portion of betel nut. Then, actually, in... Uh, my present university, Rajiv Gandhi University, there was a program. Uh, when I um, uh, went there for my lunch, I found some new type of plate is there. I took my food, came out of uh, that uh, serving place. Then I observed with a very so nice. It is the leaf seed of Erika, that is Supari, our Erika nut. A betel nut. Nice. It's a beautiful use of erica leaf seed. So these plates are made of erica leaf seeds. So Assam is full of betel nut plant. Millions of betel nut plants are there. So every day they can collect thousands of betel nut leaves. So increase betel nut cultivation. Betel nut is also having good market. And you will get the leaves, and from that leaves you, you can prepare this type of plate. So this is one way. These are this should be costly. I should think that this should be costly. These are very beautiful plates, and very good in the airports. Especially I found very good paper plates, very good strong paper plates uh, are available in uh, stalls inside uh, airports. Those are also good, but those will be much costlier. So this is the future. This is the future because in outer atmosphere, there will be no oxygen. So there will be some oxygen cell, oxygen station. Or in oxygen station, trees will be grown. 
from that trees they will trap oxygen and will supply it to people this is imaginary but really you should understand so from this imaginary but this is not imaginary this is from delhi in delhi 2020 to 2020 2019 2021 on road sides they had to install this oxygen kiosk because there are especially this october november december january february march especially january february march oxygen level and pollution level uh, oxygen level decreases pollution level increases uh, you cannot work peacefully uh, you will uh, feel uh, less oxygen uh, in your uh, during your respiration you will feel weak so on road side sometimes you will enter a oxygen kiosk get some oxygen for some time then again start your work in west bengal also this year this year uh, they started this oxygen kiosk this is this this oxygen kiosk is inside a small bus and uh, they are stationed at different places you, if you want oxygen you enter the bus uh, take oxygen for some time pay for that and come out so this is so we have to purchase oxygen for your everyday survival remember uh, the days are coming this is not much left ma ganga are you you have just thrown one packet of debris into ganga in river immediately ma ganga appeared and said hey you call me ma and you are throwing debris on me huh? what type of love for your ma your ganga is your ganga is your devi is your deity and how do you throw debris on ganga this is really <laughs> <laughs> what type of faith i don't know faith or philosophy we should discontinue this type of faith or philosophy eh? so you people you people enjoy all scientific discoveries facilities of scientific discovery but will restricted to those faith or philosophy that god is there god is doing everything eh? you worship god you 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 Uh, snatch flowers from tree plants and throw them to those um, idols uh, so that uh, idol will be happy and will bless you what type of philosophy this i don't know but certainly this is not scientific sorry i am a atheist i don't believe in god so this is what happening during this pandemic period and you be Uh, maybe in bihar also we don't know uh, hundreds of dead bodies uh, are thrown into the ganga and they are now they, this is the uh, uh, fate of your deity dead bodies are decomposing and you say ganga jal pavitra hai uh, what type of pavitra i don't understand and our tendency to uh, give uh, our godliness to anything on you that one cow is having one extra leg irregular structure so the cow become a god it is having one extra ear the cow become a god god or goddess huh? same thing this flower this is a very common plant flower only thing it is very rare so whenever people find it suddenly because getting it <laughs> view is quite rare so they start worshiping they said only in fortunate people seria these flowers bloom so you should worship it i am having some uh, a nice experience about it pujas but this is not the place to narrate all such stories uh, so this is the flower of your amorphophellus pionifolius or elephantium we call old now you know the climate is also changing very quickly not only the temperature is rising remember after 5 6 years or 10 years it will be difficult almost impossible to stay in kolkata unfortunately i have constructed a house at kolkata but this area of kolkata this behala khidirpur 
these Thakurpukur, these areas, there is every possibility that very soon, within 20 to 30 years, this area will be drowned. Huh? This area will be drowned by river water. There will be, this will be huh? completely water covered throughout the year. I don't know why I constructed a house here. So, uh, temperature and water submergence will create the problem in many parts of Kolkata. Then this type of stone storms, huge storms last year's Ampan, this year's Josh, huh? all these strong storms, these were absent earlier in our area. My eldest brother, my first brother, he was uh, over 90 years old. He said he has never seen this type of storm in his life. And he became so afraid and finally he died. Uh, so this is the condition. And all these things will increase. Remember, this Ampan and Jas is just the beginning and these will increase. It will make your life miserable. So these are also the gift of your development. Remember, these climatic changes are also gift of your development. Now, for something, for sophistication, you are developing this type of interesting houses. You are growing plants inside your houses. These are having little merit, but most of the demerits. Huh? I don't know in this way you can survive or not. No, this is not the way. You have to save the forest. You have to save forest over wide area. You have to return the forested we have returned the areas to the forest. You have to remove the city and return the area to the forest. Then only you can survive. Otherwise, it is not possible. I generally show a series of photos for this, but here I have taken only two photos. Two photos. Here we see, to look at the date, this is July 3rd, 2013. This is July 31st. 2013. Within one month, you see Arctica, not Pole, completely melted. Arctica is supposed to remain solid throughout the year. It is not supposed to melt. But in 2013 itself, it is completely melted. When the environmentalists, they started uh, uh, simmering that what will happen, everything will be finished. Business people, they are very happy. Because if the Arctic is melt, then the business route between Asia and Europe will be very short. There will be better business. Survive first, then you will think for business. Is it not? So we have to be realistic. You have to think what uh, scientists are saying. Don't depend on politicians. Depend on scientists. Politicians cannot save you. If something can save you, some people can save you, they are the scientists. Scientists can save you, politicians cannot. Another thing, Cape Town is running out of water. Cape Town government already declared that, sorry, we cannot sub supply you potable water. You either you dry and die, dry and die, or you purchase water with very high cost. Not. You need not to go to Cape Town. Just in our Bengaluru, what happened? In, in 19 June, 19 June was the day, day zero in Cape Town. 19 June 2019, they declared that after this date, we cannot supply you any potable water. That is the condition. Chennai, again in 2019, same thing. One, one liter water bottle was sold 200 to 400 rupees. Just one liter water bottle. One small uh, tanker with water was sold with 5,000 or more rupees. Just imagine. So, living on the bank of uh, Indian Ocean, you are not getting water. Because ocean water is not potable water. So there is a series of below, there is a series of names of different cities throughout the world. They will become dry very soon. In our country also, the list is not, not so small. Eh? In future, Bengaluru, Chennai, Delhi, eh, all these cities, 
Udaipur, Jaipur, all these cities will dry up. There will be no water, potable water uh, to survive. And that time, you follow this cartoon. This cartoon is beautiful. There is a petrol pump. Then in petrol pump itself, there will be one water pump. And there will be long queue for water pump, for getting water. Because water will be the most scarce thing. And petrol, petrol will be useless after a few years. When these battery operated cars, etc. are coming up, then petrol diesel will be useless. There will be no customer. So, with the increase of temperature, when all ice throughout the world will melt down, what will happen to Himalaya? All Himalayan ice will melt down. There will be no ice cover. So there will be no tourism, no forest in the high, on Himalaya, no ice cap. Then what will happen? Why tourists will go to visit Himalaya, is it not? Because there is no snow cap, no forest. People will not go there. This will happen within 30 to 35 years, remember. This will happen. All your North Pole, South Pole, all European Alps, etc., everywhere, ice will melt out within the next 30 years. Remember. By that time, this will be the condition of your New York town. New York town will be summer. Your Kolkata will not be saved. Your Kolkata, in Kolkata, there will be a new type of tourism. When you will reach Kolkata in some water carrier, uh, because you cannot come by train, train, train route, airport, bus route, everything will be under water. Then some small submarines, uh, some tourism agencies, they will take you in some small submarine and they will show you, see, this is tram, uh, standing on tram lines in Kolkata under water. This is the uh, Kolkata, this mint. Uh, it was producing coins earlier, now under water. This is writer's building under water. This is Navanno under water. Calcutta University under water. National Library under water. Everything will be under water. This will be the condition of Kolkata within the next 30, 35 years. This will be the condition. Remember, and we are not taking it seriously. Yeah, this will be the condition. They will take you in submarines and will show you the cities under water. Actually, the conflict is development versus survival. What do you want? If you want development, I mean present style development, then you forget about survival. And if you want to survive, then you forget about development. Because this present style of development is negative development. Can you survive in houses like this, completely green houses? Here, one entire village is having all houses covered with plants. They love plants so much in this village. We are developing so many protected areas. This is one MPCM medicinal plant conservation area in Lataguri. We work there. You see, we are having quite a few public good publications also. Yes, our purpose is over because we are having good publications. But what is happening there? Just see, uh, there these five-star hotels are coming up in near Lataguri, so that you can stay there very comfortably. And due to that, pollution is increasing. Uh, these forests are getting affected. Where rush of people increased. So we, we should think seriously. And we never supported it. Even lo numerous local people no environmentalist will support it. So I said, stop it. Cool. Yeah, few years back, if you remember in 2018, the government decided to widen the road. So they decided to fell few thousands of big trees in Lataguri area along the main road. So many agitations. We did so many things, so many shoutings, but Sorry, we don't have gun. Government is having gun. So the project was implemented uh, in front of gun. Uh, what, what is there? People are objecting. It is me. People's objection is meaningless. So we are having gun. So we shall do this. 
uh, this type of development, this negative development. But what can I do? What can I do? I can do this much only. I have developed this garden in North Bengal University, but present status of the garden is not much hopeful. Uh, so far, I know about it. Nowadays, I stopped entering there. Uh, and I established this society, East Himalayan Society for Spermatophyte Taxonomy. At least we taxonomists, we keep contact among us. We can discuss about plants and we can discuss uh, the, uh, these plant related problems with other people. To, uh, we can preach it to our students at least. Uh, so we try to do this to our society. We publish this journal. Um, as the, the introducer said, so far 30 issues we have published and not a single issue is even one day late. We are that much regular. We uh, run a series of seminars. We give a number of awards. This is one gold medal. So many medals. Very soon, maybe within one month, we are organizing our next uh, medal uh, or award giving ceremony very soon. Uh, if you are interested and take part in our program, you can join us. So with this, thank you very much. I hope I could give you something. If you are happy, then it is fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I stop now. Thank you very much, sir, for giving your valuable insights on biodiversity conservation vis a vis development. I think uh, it should be an eye opener for all. And uh, if not now, then never. Anyway, so now I can see uh, we, are, we uh, have several questions on chat box. Uh, Dr. Mithun Biswas, assistant professor of our institution, he, ha he has a question. Uh, yes. What is the reason for decrease of uh, the plant Brahmokamal? Brahmokamal, you are always collecting Brahmokamal for medicinal purpose. Even you are exporting dry plants to other countries illegally. And uh, your a huge amount of Brahma Kamal collection for worshipping your so-called God. These are the main reasons. Okay. These are the main uh, reasons. Yes. And of course, climatic amelioration is also there. Climate change. This is the main reason. Okay, sir. He has another question that what are the conservation strategy of Indian government to put it biodiversity? Yeah, they will declare some areas as protected areas uh, in the way I, as suggested by IUCN as uh, uh, wildlife sanctuary, national park, reserve, forest, etc., etc., and uh, we'll start business over it. They have to stop yeah, business over it, otherwise, conservation, conservation will be meaningless. Very true. Sir, another question from Devaproto Das. Uh, please tell me some potential threatened category of plants of Eastern Himalaya which need quick attention. Oh, for that, Devaproto should contact me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Mishu Das, uh, Mishu Shah uh, has asked uh, how common men can help to save the biodiversity. You see, if someone is covered with jungle, and unless you need that place very urgently, don't clean it. You allow wild plants to grow. Your bamboo groves, also good place for conservation. With bamboo, many other plants, many other fungi are also going, algae are also growing there. So all places, even in your paddy field, I repeat with you, you uh, try to de decrease use of these fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, chemical pesticides. Try to try to use, uh, try, try to reduce the use of these things, chemicals. And try to 
try to uh, consume wild plants more when if you are a villager you see there are many plants available in wild condition you can get them i remember in my childhood we are collecting so many plants from our uh, surrounding areas and we are eating them and now in arunachal i find my nothing up need i mean my present students they used to prepare so many types of food food items with wild plants and served me uh, and i find these are not bad bad to taste so in this way uh, uh, don't try to construct very big houses try to construct houses as soon as less as possible and another thing that major problem is uh, there, there are two major problems first major problem is our population structure do reduce population take all measures to reduce human population this is number 1 number 2 reduce the level of your comfort and happiness actually the comfort and happiness is limitless so you have to make it limited that my happiness will be up to this my comfort will be up to this sir what are you saying is it possible yeah if it is not possible your survival is also not possible okay thank you thank you sir uh, sir we have last question uh, okay. in fact we have many more questions but i would ask you the last question from yes. kobilul hasan mondol he is a undergraduate student of our krishnath college his yes. question is there are great climatic variation between himalaya and kolkata kolkata yes. is it possible to grow orchids in kolkata naturally by cultivating which are generally grow in himalayas ah uh, if you can develop one cold chamber you can grow it otherwise you can grow tropical orchids there are many tropical orchids you can visit my kolkata house there are tropical orchids we are growing <laughs> thank you sir <coughs> thank Boy, you thank you very much sir need cold chamber otherwise you can need cold chamber okay thank you so thank there, you. sir uh, thank you for uh, being with us today hello yeah i'm happy, Someone... happy to be with you chanding and giving your thank you bolche kichu ha just a minute asalata ma'am raised her hand actually raised her hand to say something i think yes, okay okay asalata oh, madam please, please. <laughs> yeah please madam asalata madam please unmute no, unmute no. your uh... okay nothing 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 it was a good lecture thank you thank you sir okay, okay. nothing more uh, so um, we have come to the end of our program and uh, now i would request sri biplab bandopadhyay our respected controller of examinations of murshidabad university as well as no, senior just, most just faculty just to it uh, from uh, iirs uh, dr k k das is here so dr das okay. did you like my lecture Dr. Das, did you like my lecture? Yes, sir. Sir, please, sir, please unmute your mic. Please unmute your mic. Sorry, I cannot hear. I, I, I cannot hear. Sir, you are muted. Sir, please unmute. Sir, please unmute. I think there is some problem. Yeah, yeah. I was just uh, telling that it was thought provoking. It was a wonderful lecture. We really enjoyed it, and uh, we uh, we think that uh, we should also follow. You know, uh, you lead us, and then we will also follow you. And this, so I'm really very impressed with your lecture. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to come to Dehradun once. If you can create one opportunity, then I shall come and we'll discuss. Get some opportunity. <laughs> sure, sure. I shall come and we'll discuss. Anytime, anytime. You're most welcome. Thank you. You are my teacher, and today is uh, this program is on teachers' <laughs> day program. Is it not? <laughs> you taught me at IIRS. I IIRS. Is it not? Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. So now I would like to request the Bhutlo Bondabadai, a respected controller of examinations of Murshidabad University, as well as our senior most faculty of our botany department, 
to give vote of thanks over to you sir thank you shamdeep after a splendid discussion it is customary to deliver a uh, vote of thanks on behalf of the pg department of botany murshidabad university first of all we convey our gratitude to honorable vice chancellor madam murshidabad university for her constant inspiring inspiration to organize the invited lecture on the occasion of teachers day celebration in our institution in 2021 Her constant support in this regard is highly appreciable. After that, we convey our deepest regards to the honourable speaker, Professor Abhay Prasad Das of Rajiv Gandhi University, Itanagar, Uttar Pradesh, formerly from North Bengal University. His presentation, in a lucid manner, touches our hearts. Students are highly benefited by his speech. so thank you so much for accepting our invitation in a very short time another thing i like to mention here it is uh, a overwhelming conditions for us to, uh, from all over india as well as from our old colleagues as well as from the murshidabad districts how many from north east good uh, how many from north east Uh, i think there will be 10 i think right. and all over india from the eastern parts of the india that are the overwhelming presence of the participants of our respected and dearest colleagues hmm. especially we are very much thankful to professor radha kanto radhanath mukhopadhyay my teacher ashalata uh, did rosario scientist of isro North Bengal University faculties and our uh, faculties from Assam. We must be very thankful yeah, to them. Namita, madam. Mm, yes. Namita Thank Nath, you, sir. Doctor Namita Nath. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Thereafter, we like to express our thanks to our head of the department, Madam Doctor Dola Baral, for her constant effort for making a success for this event. We express our deep gratitude towards our colleagues for their vigorous work for this event, especially Doctor Shondip Mode, Doctor Ashim Mondol, Doctor Mithun Bishash, Papiya Chakravarti, and Priyanka Nandi. We are very much thankful to Mr. Shujan Shah and his party for providing technical support. lastly we are very much proud of our students for their active participation thanks goes to all of you thank you all and good night thank you sir thank you everyone thank for you. joining and making our program a success thank you so much good night bhalo laglo ki na bol sir khub bhalo legeche sir sir eto informative ha ebong mane 